Resiliency is the ability to overcome challenges of all kinds, trauma, tragedy, personal crises, or just regular old life problems, and then bouncing back stronger, wiser, and more adaptable. I'm Air Force Staff Sergeant Ashley New, and I had the opportunity to sit down and discuss some issues affecting today's airmen with Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Khalith Wright, on this episode of the Air Force Podcast. The Air Force Podcast. So for me, resiliency really, you know, it kind of refers to that ability to to make it through the the tough times. So I so I think I've I've accepted that life is tough and it's going to be tough and and things will happen. You'll go through your ups and you'll go through your downs and sometimes it'll be self-inflicted and sometimes it'll be the universe or, you know, what whatever challenges that we all face. So speaking of some tough times, I actually had a, a fellow airman reach out to me knowing that this conversation was happening. And she wants to know what your thoughts are on the suicide epidemic right now and factors such as unreasonable work schedules, um, for example. What is your insight on that? So there's probably lots of places around the Air Force uh, and space and maintenance and security forces in our special warfare that have unreasonable work schedules, long work hours, lot, lots of lots of work, not, not a lot of... Uh, free free time. And I think it's really up to leaders at every level to manage those those types of things, to know that, okay, the mission is important and we, and we have to have someone manning these positions and getting this work done, but also it's part of my responsibility to take care of your friend's problem. And I don't, you know, could the Air Force come out with a policy that says um, no more unreasonable work schedules, perhaps. Would it solve the problem? I don't think so. Would it make any difference? I don't think so. But could whomever her flight chief or her NCOIC or her squadron superintendent or squadron commander could take accountability and responsibility for that organization, her work center, and say, okay, I think we're, this is important work. It really is. Space, the space mission force is important. But um, we're burning our, our folks out. And so let me come up with some ideas on how to get the work done and how to keep the people healthy and happy and resilient at the at the same time. So it sounds like you're tracking similar situations all over and working towards making it better. Right. So I'm tracking that again all over our Air Force that you know folks are busy and there's there's a lot of work to be done, but I'm also tracking uh that there are leaders like that like I just talked about that um, that find ways to give people the, the relief that they need or the time off or build schedules, you know, um, defenders that have come out of their 12-hour shifts, which really kind of are 14-hour shifts and, and have gone to eight-hour shifts. I think I was just down at McDill where, where they've been able to do that. So this really is, if you ask me, a leadership imperative, not just a leadership issue, but I think it's imperative that that leaders get ahead of this. And, and personally, you know, what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that from a, whether it's PME or our informal leadership development programs, we build and inspire the right types of engaging leaders that can get after these, these problems. What are you hoping to do to retain these good leaders to build up our force? You know, retention is a, it's, it's hard to say, hey, if we, if we implement this program or give everybody an SRB or what have you, because everybody kind of has their own kind of reason, I think, for for serving. And so, what we try to what we try to do, um, what I ask leadership at all levels to do again is this is coming like right back to a this leadership imperative is to find out, hey, what motivates each of these these individuals? How do you give them the resources and the training and the decision space and the ability to be creative and innovative that they need to continue to to serve. And that's different for everybody, right? So you you may want, hey, as long as I have the autonomy to do the types of projects and work with Chief Wright and, and the other senior leaders and be, be innovative, somebody else might say, I, I'll do whatever you want me to do as long as I get a bonus or as long as I get paid or as long as I get a, a good assignment. And so I think it's it's hard to say, hey, we, sh- we can do this one thing. I guess at that next highest level, squadron command, you know, and beyond, 
again, how do you inspire leaders to be accountable and responsible for taking care of their folks? I think that's what can help with retention. So it sounds like there's a lot of changes still coming. Or is there anything in particular that you're working on we could look forward to in the future? Yeah, so we're always trying to make, make things better. So I, I don't know that there's anything specific. Uh, you know, we've been working on the new redesign in our enlisted evaluation system. The officer evaluation system is being redesigned and right alongside trying to make it better for all of our airmen. We're still working on the indefinite enlistments. Um, the bereavement leave and some of those things that really a lot of the things that airmen have asked us about uh, quality of life kind of issues that makes life better for for them so we'll continue to to listen you know we call it me and the and the chief we call it squinting with our ears so we'll continue to listen to the feedback that we get again to to give people kind of availability and access to the help that they need that sounds great yeah <laughs> that, that would have been extra helpful considering all the things that I've experienced. So it's really nice to hear it. positive changes in resources that are going to be available to, to airmen. So. so how would how would it have helped you, you think? Well, for me personally, um, after being diagnosed with an aggressive breast cancer about a year and a half ago, uh-huh. having these extra resources in place, kind of a, a guide, if you will, yeah. to show me along the way, because when I first started everything, it was kind of new. Not very many people in the unit had to really deal with anything like that. So um, like a s- severe medical condition. And so it was kind of like, well, what do we do now? Yeah. Um, other than me going to my appointments and all that. But on the Air Force side, all the, you know, I guess bureaucratic office things, it was just kind of odd because not a lot of people had experience with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe having that middle person liaison. Yeah. I mean, you have a good news story, though, right? Because I think you, and I and I know it was tough. Can't say that I was in it with you, but I was kind of on the periphery watching and checking up on you. And, and I was coming down here, you know, pretty often to, to do some work. And uh, between, um, you know, Carl and the rest of the team, I mean, they were... 100%, I felt like they were 100% engaged in, in, in making sure you were you were doing okay. I think I still owe you some macaroni and cheese. Uh, it's, it's, yes, a yes. little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, let it slide. But, but so how, how did, how did uh, you know, having your wife and the, the, your teammates here and, and perhaps you had other, other family that was, that was around, you know, how did that connectivity, you know, really help you? It was completely immense. I I could not imagine going through what I did had I been anywhere else in the world, had I been stationed with different people. Everything happens for a reason. And the fact that I am in the NCR amidst some of the the best medical care, um, have, I have options and, and just the, the chain of command is, has been completely 100% helpful, which I am absolutely lucky because I've met other airmen who have gone through similar things. Um, I, I recently just heard about an airman um, who is undergoing chemotherapy for a similar thing, and she still reports to work two, three days a week, and I cannot even imagine having to get up the next day and going into work or just taking half a day to go get injected and sit there for a couple hours and then going in after that yeah i was completely dead to the world i looked like uncle fester <laughs> i bald <laughs> sunken eyes i yeah. i literally looked like the crypt keeper and to hear these other women doing these things mm-hmm. and i'm like where's where's their command why why are they having to do all this like where's the convalescent leave like where's the or hey don't worry about coming in kind of thing like so if you can remember, and if it's not too painful to, to think about, like your darkest, most difficult days, you know, what what helped you get through, you know, when it was like, man, this chemo is hard, it's tough, I, you know, I'm not, I don't know if you ever felt like you weren't going to make it, but whatever your kind of your, your toughest, darkest time was, you know, how'd you, how'd you pull through what? So yeah, I created a Facebook group to kind of help keep family and friends um, updated on everything. Being able to 
write it all out, kind of like blog style, like long mm-hmm. statuses. I'd do the research of all the things and like the infographics and, yeah. and stuff. Cause by doing all of that, it made me understand everything a lot better, more like layman's terms. And then I could relate that to my friends and family who had all these questions. And so I can kind of break, break it down Barney style. So that kind of helped make the, I guess the scariness of it all yeah. um, disappear a little bit. And then keeping humor as well. I'd find random memes or <laughs> <laughs> as, as you yeah. are very familiar with memes, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, and like cartoons and and everything or the one thing that people always comment on are my um, who wore it better quote unquote Uh and uh, I would have these photos um, like a movie character someone famous and I would take a photo of myself and put them side by side and it was just always really funny comparisons the first one I did it was basically me and a baby chicken yeah when I was starting to lose my hair and it was all like it was it was bad, and <laughs> like I said, Uncle Fester. There was one of me and and, and him oh, side man, I gotta by side. Oh, I got to check these and, out. Yeah, uh, and um, Voldemort. <laughs> so, so I think I'm I'm interested in was this was this a newfound maybe strength or resilience that you didn't know you had, or was this did you have some life experiences that allowed you to enter into this phase of your your life, this kind of difficult time, and say? Hey, you know, I've been through some things before, so I so I think I can I can work through this. I mean, where where did that come from? How? I, it's just kind of my innate personality is just trying to find the positive yeah. in in anything that the glass half full kind of a mindset. Yeah. So it, I think it was just that, but it really um, it's funny because now. Um, before, well, before everything, I feel like my brain worked off of like, you know, like Fios, like, you know, just like super fast speed. And now <laughs> I'm like, at the worst time, it was probably like dial up. I remember like, we talked about that it was one just time. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like just not connecting. And now I'm more like, okay, I've got some like basic internet now, yeah. spotty Wi Fi. <laughs> I'm trying to watch a video and it's like, well, it's buffering. So that'd be like, me sitting here, I'm like oh, trying to think. Yeah. Like I know like words and stuff, but I just don't comprehend things anymore. So that's probably like my yeah, no, biggest I, challenge. I think the reason I was asking all of that is because as we meet folks that are going through either the same thing or something very similar to you, I'd be interested in you know what what would you what would you tell them right on on your darkest day when you just you know feel like you can't go on or you know this is kind of the worst pain or the worst feeling or the worst situation ever um you know what advice would you give them just find that that good that even even the tiniest bit of good just find that work towards it or just make it happen um there were some days that i was just laid up on the couch but i had my dog right there i'm like i can't let her down so i gotta you know work my myself up to go let her out and at that point I'm like okay I'm standing I can get a little bit of a you know some ice cream or whatever or <laughs> looking forward to you know my wife coming home bringing me some frozen yogurt I'm like that just you know got me through that day or like something we're setting bigger milestones when I finish 35 rounds of of intense radiation it was on my birthday it was my last one and then I knew that there was going to be a big party the next day to celebrate, you know, finishing radiation. And then that also coincided with the trip to California. So, of course, we hit up Disneyland. So knowing going through radiation, I'm burning yeah. painful time. But knowing that I had that that dull whip to look forward to, mm-hmm. like the next week, I was like, you know, I can do this. Yeah. This is fine. So nice. it's just looking forward to to the milestones or the, the things. Now, now, how did your wife handle it all? I know she's, a, I just saw six for six, right? So he's six in six years, and she's pretty sharp in recruiting now, right? Well, she's uh, finishing up her recruiting school training, so she'll be uh, reporting to uh, Tennessee. So we probably need to get you down to McGee Tyson or somewhere close, right? I mean, it, it would be ideal, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll work on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, she's, she's amazing. She has been a, a solid rock through, through it all. And I know it was pretty hard on her at certain times, but she, you wouldn't have been able to tell because she was, she was a rock. So, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, people maybe take for granted 
the, that support from from a spouse or a significant other or you know a friend or whatever. I think you know throughout my life and certainly throughout my career, connectivity has been a, a big key to me working through whatever challenging times I've had. Having friends and having my wife and family around, man, it's just you know I, I don't think I could have done. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be here, uh, but I definitely wouldn't have been able to make it through some of the tougher times without. Absolutely. Without family, yeah. Yeah. We moved on to post well, Fort Belvoir because you know she's army. And, right. You know, well, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's not. It's not Air Force, but no, yeah. it, it'll do. Just since moving on there, we've been surrounded by some amazing military families from all all branches, and ended up finding right. my flock. Essentially, I think that's important for anyone anywhere in in the in the service. You you got to find your people. I just think there's so much power in being connected and there's even more power in having someone that's going through something as challenging or very similar to to what you have. And I try to, when I meet folks that have gone through what what you went through, I try to, you know, make some connections and, and help allow you guys to inspire each other. So you've asked me about my stuff, but how do you stay emotionally healthy with all of the demands of your job? So I think uh, first I try to keep things into perspective. I'm the chief mass sergeant of the Air Force and it's a demanding job. And there's a lot of people depending on me to be a lot of places and do a lot of a lot of things, but I'm still human, right? I'm still just a guy. And uh, I never allow myself to, to feel like I'm anything else than just, Khalith Wright, who happens to be the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. And so I think a combination of um, fitness, prayer, meditation, and I keep going back to this term, you know, connectivity. You know, I have a a few wingmen, Chief Manny Pinheiro, who is the First Sergeant Special Duty Manager for the the Air Force. He keeps me sane. You know, we've become like brothers over the last... A couple of years. He's older than me, but I feel like I'm the big brother. And my wife, my wife really keeps me grounded. I mean, that's that's helpful. When I'm home, I'm the dishes guy and the garbage guy and the laundry guy and uh, all that stuff. Uh, and I, I don't I don't get to be the chief master in the Air Force at home, which is which is great. So yeah, I I think just uh, maybe the core of it is me really keeping things into perspective and not allowing this j- job or opportunity to to go to my head and accepting that, hey man, we're all human and we, we go through these emotions. I have my ups, I have my downs. I have days when I don't feel like getting out of the bed. I, I have days when I don't feel like um, doing an interview or whatever it is. Uh, but frankly, on those days, um, I think of people like you and I think of people like you know some of, some of my other friends that, that's going through tough times and I say to myself, come on dude, if they can do it, you can do it. So just get your butt up and you know, make it happen. So with this position and try not to let it get to your head, and we all know the, the infamous Enlisted Jesus nickname and all the memes and all that. I never heard that. Oh, what? Oh, no. yeah, okay. What is it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> so how, what's your what's your uh, take on all that? Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's humbling is what I, what I would say is I think I understand what where it comes from and what it means. I think, you know, our airmen are appreciative and supportive of what we do. It's humbling to have somebody think of you in that in that way. Uh, it's funny uh, just seeing some of them, seeing how good they've gotten over the last however long it's, it's been since they started making the memes. Um, I do worry a little bit about um, religious sensitivity for you know it, it I don't it may not be funny or or humbling to to everybody you know some people may see it as uh, a bit offensive so I just tell people to keep that in mind as as they share these memes or create these memes and and whatnot and and I personally try not to promote it right so I'm okay with people people doing it but uh, I won't I won't autograph or you know post any of that stuff on any of my social media accounts but but I but I am really really humbled that folks think of us in that in that positive uh, of a light is there anything else that you wanted to touch on today this has been good for me I'm always inspired whenever I get a chance to 
to to talk to you. I mean, I've kind of people don't know this unless you told them, but you were the first person to interview me when I got this job. That's true. And yeah. uh, hopefully, I've gotten a little bit better since the you know you taught me a few things back in back in the day. But uh, so this is exciting. It's exciting to 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 see you back here in the office and and doing well. And uh, really, just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being such an inspiration. Thank you for helping out uh, Boo and and inspiring so many other people. Um, so I get the memes and, and all this other stuff, but do you do you see yourself as a hero, a shero, an inspiration to, to other people? I wouldn't necessarily say a hero, but I do see the impact that, as small as they may be um, here and there, my character is to help so just seeing other people go through similar things or being able to reach out and provide the resources that were given to me um, yeah I, I definitely would not call myself a hero I would like to continue develop at least like a speech or something because I know that I could do more mm -hmm. down the road I just have to get my head all straight on yeah. again just be an advocate for other patients for example the wounded warrior program uh -huh. i've heard about it yeah i knew it it existed i just didn't realize that i immediately qualified for it the day of diagnosis wow. so had i known that we could have put in the referral because an airman you you can refer yourself you can have your commander do it supervisor another airman it doesn't matter one page application that you send up gets signed and it got reviewed within 24 hours and like, hey, welcome to the program. And it set me up with a case manager who had 25 other resources lined up, like VA, medical, and all these things that I had been struggling with trying to figure out and find out on my own when all it took was one piece of paper and meeting one person, and then now I'm set. Yeah. So things like that, trying to help spread that word of, you don't have to be wounded in combat to right. qualify. You get cancer, you some other illness or a training accident or whatever, you, you pretty much qualify. And that's a good portion of, of the force that don't even realize that this resource is out there and they can use it. Yeah. I, I guess I do have another question, though. Can we say you've kicked cancer's ass? Essentially, I'm in remission, but the first... The next five years are, are the critical moment Yeah, just because of the the rate of a uh, right. re reoccurrence rate. Sorry. The reoccurrence rate in the next five years is still about 75%. So once I hit that five-year mark, we could say I'm I'm pretty good to go for for life. So We're we just going to say you kicked cancer's ass, yeah, right? Okay. For, yeah, we'll go yeah. with that. So how much of, of that is science and technology and medicine? And what percentage of it is will and determination, would you say? Was it just, hey, I was just a, the guinea pig and the doctors and the science and the medicine did it, or I was determined to not allow cancer to win? And, and so I, how much of it do you at least believe, you know, your success has been? I feel a good at least 75% of the science and the medicine. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a good chunk of the will or motivation, I wouldn't have gotten out of bed to get to that next uh, treatment. Had I not pushed through to get the full treatment, who knows? Mm -hmm. The outcome might not have been quite as favorable. The majority of it is definitely the, the medicine, the science, but their solid, you know, quarter chunk at least yeah. is, is that will having that support system my house would have been a mess. I would have been eating. I don't even want to know <laughs> had it not been for neighbors and friends constantly coming over and making me good home cooked food to keep me nourished and, and healthy as possible while going through yeah. treatment. So yeah, a good, a good chunk of it is that support and that motivation to get through. Well, let me say thank you. Uh, you may not think it or realize it, but you know, you're a hero and an inspiration to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we all have our angels on earth, right, that walk around and, and unknowingly and unwittingly inspire and encourage, you know, so so many people. So I, I would tell you, man, keep fighting, keep doing what you're doing, and, and keep 
keep helping others, keep being you because that's, that's, that's important. And a lot of people, um, look up to, to you and, and what you've been through and, and they use it as inspiration to include me. So, man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming in. And like I said, without that support system, you are definitely in that rank because giving those random text messages like, Hey, checking in, how you doing? I was at your desk, <laughs> just checking it out. Those small things actually two seconds out of your day, but it totally made my day and like nice. little things. Yeah. So oh, good. you keep doing what you're doing. Cause you know, obviously with all the, the nicknames and the memes <laughs> and everything, you're doing something right. So keep it up. Thank you. So, I appreciate right. it. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming in and sitting with me. All right. Thank you. It's been a blast. <laughs> The Air Force Podcast.